Hello everybody, Imad Hanna here from Cyber Stockroom. Today I'm going to be walking you through our new expiration date feature. We've had a lot of demand for this feature and I'm really excited to show you how it works. Now since this is a feature that not everybody's going to be using, we've allowed you to toggle it on and off from your settings page. By default this feature is off, so if you'd like to turn it on you can go to your general settings and select show expirations. Keep in mind, this setting just hides the feature. If I select hide, it's not going to delete any of my information and everyone else on my team will still have access to the expiration dates. It's just a way for me as a user to control what I see on my screen. All right, so now that I've turned on expirations, I'm going to notice a couple of things. First, if I select any product in my inventory, I'll see that there's now an expiration field attached to it. I can select a date, change it, or clear it. It's important to note that a product can only have one expiration date. So for this green widget here, I can see that there are three over here in this room and five over there on the truck, but all of them have the same expiration date. So when I set the date here for May 26, that's going to affect the widgets across the whole map. Let me close this pop-up. You'll notice that under the Products menu, there is now a tab for Expirations. If I click on it, I'll see a list of everything in my inventory with an expiry date. The expired items will show up in red, and the items expiring within 60 days will show up in yellow. At the top of the screen, I also have a count of my expiring items. Now I can filter this list down by typing a keyword. Let's say I want to find that green widget that we were looking at. I'll type green and it will show up. Uh, it's yellow in this case because we set the expiry date to May 26, which is in a few weeks. So that means it's expiring soon. If I click on that item, I'll see the same pop-up with properties and the map. But I can also click this manage button. And this will give me some more settings to help me update or replace my expiring products. Whenever I'm replacing an expiring product, I'll have the option to select a new expiry date, as well as a new product number. If I want CyberStockroom to select the product number for me automatically, I can just tick the checkbox marked Auto. Now there are five different ways to replace an expiring product, and I want to walk you through each of them. In your business, you may only end up needing one or two of these options, but it's good to get familiar with them because they can save you some time. First option is called replace and delete. And in this option, you're doing four things automatically. You're checking the old product out of your locations. You're deleting the old product. You're creating a brand new product, but with the same properties as the old one. And you're automatically checking in that new product to all the appropriate locations. So you can see a visual example for this in the picture on the right. We're starting off with the red product, which is expired, and we know that it's located in two different places on the map. So first we're going to check out that red product, we're going to delete it from our product list, we're going to create the new product, and that's the green one here, and we'll check in that new product to those same locations. So this option is a full replacement if you're planning on swapping out each of the expired items at the same time. The second option is exactly the same as the first one, except that the old product will not be automatically deleted from your inventory. It will be checked out of all the locations, but it will not be deleted. And that means you can still search it, you can pull it up, and you can even check it back in if you want to. The third option is called Clone and Delete. Here you're checking the old product out of all the locations, and you're deleting it from your inventory. You're also creating a new product with the same properties as the old one, but you don't check that product in to any of the locations. We leave that last part, uh, the checking in part, up to you later. This is useful if you've replaced all the expired items, but you haven't stored them away or distributed them yet. They're just sitting there maybe on a truck or in temporary storage, so you would use this option of just clone and delete. Option 4, the next one, is the same as clone and delete, except that you don't delete the old product. It's still there in case you need it. 
And finally, option five is the simplest option of all. It allows you to clone the expiring product and create a new one, but you don't touch the old product. You don't even remove it from its current locations. So those are the five options. Uh, really, they're tools in your tool belt, and you'll have to decide which ones make sense for you and your business. And once you've settled on a process, you should only end up using one or two of these on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm going to demonstrate just one of these options, the first one. And we'll do that for this green widget here that we've selected. Remember, this option is going to replace the expired, or in this case, the soon-to-be expiring product with a new one. It will delete the old product, and it will check the new one into all the correct locations. So let's set the expiry date for a few months from now, maybe uh, July 24th. And the new product, let's give it a generic product number. Let's say ABC-123. Remember, we could also have Cyber Stockroom automatically generate a code for us if we tick this box up here. Okay, so everything looks good. Let me click on Replace and Delete. And now, this will take me to the Activity History page, where I can see exactly what has happened. The replacement that we just made actually generated four different entries in our history, and they're numbered one to four, so you know that they're part of the same process. First, a new product was created. That product was checked in, and we can see the quantities and the locations. Then the old product was checked out, and finally the old product was deleted. If we click on the new product that was created, we'll see that it looks exactly the same like the old one, except that it has a different product number and a different expiry date. And because we selected the first replacement option, the product was checked in to all the correct locations, as we can see from the map. So by selecting that first option, we're able to save ourselves a lot of work. Of course, we could have deleted and replaced the product ourselves manually, but this just makes things a lot smoother. And the other options work in the same way as well. So that's it for this new expiration date feature. Please share your feedback with us and let us know how this feature is working out for you. And as always, thank you for watching.